Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be going over how to trade support and resistance levels, and I'm going to explain the logic that goes behind it. Here are some of the packages we're going to require. In this tutorial, I'll be using intraday data, specifically focusing on 15 minute bars for the SPY. I'm gonna be reading in some sample data that ranges from October 21st, 2022, up to November 17th, 2022. And if we take a look at that data frame, this is how the unformatted data looks like. So we have the date or the bar at minute intervals. We have the open, high, low, close and volume along with the symbol. So I'm gonna be using this data and convert these into 15 minute bars. So here in our script, I have a function called df2xts. And in this function, we pass in the ticker we want data for and the candle size in minutes. So if we open this up, I'm gonna subset my data and look for that ticker and extract the open, high, low, close and volume and order by the timestamp, which is in this format. After we have an XTS object, I'm gonna use two period to convert these into 15 minute candles. So I'll pass in my XTS object. The period will be minutes. K will be the minutes we pass in, formatting the index start and passing in the ticker to format the column names. So by using this function, I can essentially convert my minute data into different intervals. So let's go ahead and run this function. I'm gonna assign the ticker, use that function to get 15 minute bars, and we'll go ahead and plot the data. All right, so this is our range. It looks like everything returned correctly since I do see 6.30 for the start, which is Pacific time, and the ending bar ends at 12.45 for the last 15 minutes. Now let's go ahead and use tech chart to see if we can detect some trend channels. So here in our script, if we scroll up, we're gonna use find trend channel by passing in our intraday data. Let's go ahead and run this block and plot the channel it found. All right, so for this function, it's gonna calculate and find trend channels for all the data you pass in, which may not really be helpful as we are forward looking. So to give you an example of what I mean, let's try and find some trend channels up to November 11th and see what data it returns. So we'll set this chart aside and we're gonna try and find trend channels from the start of our data up to November 11th. And then we'll take a look at the plot. So let's run that. All right, so as you see, it's very good at detecting the trend channels, but sometimes they may not be forward looking, which is something I'm looking for in order to create an algorithm. So luckily for us, we can use another function from TechChart where it finds horizontal lines and the lines that it finds can be used on future data points. So to run an example, we're gonna use find endpoints. We're gonna pass in our full data set and the tolerance level will be 1%. So this tolerance level can be modified and the support and resistance levels will be within that tolerance. So let's go ahead and run that line and we'll go ahead and take a look at the plot to see what they look like. All right, so it seems that for most of these, they do in fact represent support and resistance levels. Now let's see how good these are using add a sample data. So here in our script, I'm gonna try and find some support and resistance levels up to a certain date and then plotting the add a sample data along with those support and resistance levels. So let's take a look at what type of support and resistance levels it found for data up to November 11th. And our add a sample data will be November 14th and forward. So let's run this block and we'll take a look at the plot. For the most part, it seems that these lines tend to hold on add a sample data. What I decided to do in this script was to step into each trading day using the support and resistance levels calculated from the previous day and see what type of returns these can generate. So the logic is if it's trading within a certain threshold within the line, if it's above such as this one, it'll go long and we have to assign our stop loss along with our profit taking and these will be in points. I think for this tutorial, I use 25 cents for the stop loss and 50 cents for profit taking. So again, if it's trading within a certain threshold within this line, depending on where it closes, it'll either go short or go long. And here in the script, you can step into each trading day using the previous support and resistance levels found from the previous day. Now let's take a look at the function that'll backtest. So within this function, we need to insert the date that will be the end date to calculate all the support and resistance levels. We need to pass in the trade date or the date that we want to trade, and it'll calculate the PNL based off of this date. The minimum threshold, which I explained earlier, is the number of points away from the support and resistance level that it will consider for us to take the trade. We need to assign our profit taking and stop loss in points. So if we open this up, we're gonna start off by calculating those lines up to the end date. We're gonna extract those values. We're gonna subset our stock data for the trade date. We're gonna add new columns for the signal, the entry price, and the exit price. And if we scroll up here, 
and within this block we're going to go through each bar or each row we're going to calculate or extract the support and resistance line that's closest to the stock price once we have that we're going to calculate the difference between the close and that support and resistance level and based off of that point difference if it's within our threshold that we pass in we're going to check whether the point difference is less than zero meaning that the stock is really close to hitting that resistance level so we're going to take a short on the opposite side if it's greater than zero that means that the close is above the support line so we're going to go long otherwise just insert a zero if it does not meet any of these cases after that we're going to lag our signal since these will be calculated based off of the close if we get consecutive signals then we need to drop those as we're going to end up taking that very first trade now for each of the signals we need to find the outcome that's whether if we took the profit or if we got stopped so we're going to subset those bars where we generated a signal and within this block we're going to subset our data from our current signal up to a bar before the next signal which will give us our trade range now within this trade range we're going to use the high and the low to figure out whether we took profit or if we got stopped so our entry price will be the opening bar and by using our entry price which is the opening price we're going to calculate the difference between that price and the low and the high so that'll give us the open to low and open to high which will fall into two different categories whether we're long or if we're short so if our signal is one we're going to assign our outcome and insert our exit price same for the short side except that since we're short we need to flip the stopped and took profit variables once we have figured out the outcome and assigned our entry and exit prices we just need to return that very first bar which contains our signal our entry and our exit we're going to calculate the pnl for one share and return that as an xts object so here if we minimize this function we're going to go ahead and run it. I'm going to extract the unique trading days from my stock data. And if we open up line 166, I'm going to pass in my end dates starting from index 16 up to 19. So that's November 11th up to November 16th. And we're going to step into each trading day. And by using these variables for threshold, stop and take profit, we're going to calculate our PL. So if we run this block and then calculate our profit here, if we take a look at all, we will see the bars where we took trades, whether we were long or if we were short, our entry price, our exit price, and our PL. And for each of these, we will either see the points where we took profit, so it'll be positive for profit taking, and negative if we were stopped. And from November 14th to the 17th, we had 17 trades. And if we go back to our script and we run the last line, our profit was 175 for every share. So we can definitely modify a couple of things by changing around these levels. But that concludes the video, guys. I hope this was useful information. I'll leave a link down in the description area to the Patreon where you can find the script. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.